All right, welcome back to the next video series of our training session. This is video number two pertaining to our rolling command station, the RCS. And in this video, we'll be explaining how to build the baseboard for this project. But we must digress first. A little clarification on the power source and the power switch that we hooked up into the rolling command station. Uh, when power is fed to the top unit and the switch is in the off position, um, everything will be turned off including the power strip. And of course just opposite when you turn on the power switch, as you can see it also turns on the power strip within the box. Therefore powering everything up that's within the box. Here is another view of the way I place the connectors coming off of the power strip and onto the C13 switch. And as you can see anything that is plugged into the wall the right side part of the plug uh, goes to your black wire. So I mark these in black and the bigger plate um, of the plug goes to the white wire. Alright, let's get back to the build. When we were connecting the PM42 or deciding how to wire the PM42, there's many methods of connecting the PM42 to wherever you want it to go. Uh, one of them being for soldering all the wires to different connections and different terminal strips. But this seemed a little complicated and so as I was doing my looking around and research I found the PM42 breakout board. This photo is off the internet which someone graciously posted and it gives a very clear explanation of how everything is basically wired. Connections between the command station and the PM42 breakout board are very simple that really appealed to me. So as you can see as the components are laying in the box this is the size of the PM42 and the PM42 breakout board when it's all connected. So it's relatively a low profile and the wiring is minimum so that was very space saving and appealing to me. So before we start the build on the baseboard, the club happened to have a stand already made and it fit perfectly. But this is basically what it looks like. So there's the cover board over the PM42 to help protect it. And then the power, the Digitrax power wart lays on top. So jumping ahead, the PM42 should be mounted with hex spacers and I'll show you in the next slide and those are um, here and here and there and there. When this cover lays on top of the PM42 once everything is mounted in place the cover should be basically laying on these four rectangle thingies. I don't know what they're called. So here are the hex nut spacer configurations on the PM42. The front one is shorter than the rear ones. And let me go to the next slide and I'll show you. So you can see the PM42 breakout board sits a little bit lower than the actual PM42. Uh, so now I'll go back one. And so you can see with the hex nuts the washer was actually on top, the washer and the um, the nut were on top and these screws were coming up from the bottom up. So that way if I need to take off the PM42, which we did plenty of times during the build, all you have to do is unscrew your nut and pop the PM42 up off the, off the board. Here's a placement for looking way, for thinking ahead. Um, placement of the feet. Uh, these three are going to be secured to the board and you'll see the configuration of them and their placement, how they fit over, you know, the, the cover itself attaches to these feet. 
so everything is nice and compact and there's plenty of room underneath for the wiring to go as well uh, just remember to when you're when you're placing your PM42 on the MDF board just leave a little space here so these wires can fold over and, and be attached to where they need to go these are Anderson power poles the male to female connectors and here he goes that's the final concept that's what it's going to look like um, that's this is the project complete when I could actually lift the whole board out and put it on the on my workbench so let's get back to the board basically when you're putting your components down you're going to want to trace all your components around each one so you know where everything's laying and that's going to be important for your feet placement which we'll see next this is a LED driver we use to power the UR92 head both UP5s and the PM42 uh, I'll explain that in the future videos so once you get everything traced out you'll see the tracings around each of the components and I did change one thing after I had built up everything and put the screws in place and that was that I actually put a screw right behind the command station here because initially I'd put it underneath which ended up not making sense obviously because I couldn't access it so I replaced the screw there and it it did much it was much easier to play so here you can see the first screw mistake underneath um, I just patched it up with some black tape and it sealed up quite nicely. But this is the overall configuration of where your your feet are gonna gonna be placed for the MDF board to lay on, and then those all be screwed into the board eventually. So once you got your feet in place, you eyeball the drill hole and just go for it. Uh, try not to drill too close to the mold markings um, because wing nuts will be accessed from underneath the box and you can see these mold markings here. Try to avoid those at least, you know, a half inch or so away from those when you drill your holes so it, it doesn't run into them. And let me show you what I mean. Oh, grab your nuts. So these wing nuts I found on eBay and these this part of the wing nut actually screws into the feet there so just be aware of that so here's what I'm talking about a little bit too close to that molding when you twist that wing nut around it, it kind of pushed it a little bit but actually ended up working out I didn't have to redo it in or anything just wanted you to be aware so you wouldn't make the same mistake. This is what all the wing nuts look like secured in place. And then we screwed everything down. Um, here is the first picture, as I said, that was actually under the command station. I ended up moving it over here. And I'm just kind of throwing in the components to make sure so when we're done, we unscrew all the screws on the top and remove the board. And as you can see, the feet are still all in place. Now the baseboard is complete. Don't mind the June bug. Mark your screw holes from the other side. This is intended so you do not place any electrical components over your attachment points later on in the process. All right, thanks for watching this video. The next training video will talk about securing your board components to the MDF board itself so that you can lay the, board, the whole toolbox on its side without anything falling off or falling apart. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.